What's going on everyone and welcome back to another video. As you probably would have guessed if you would have clicked on this video, today we are doing some Premier League predictions. My predictions more so for the season up ahead. I know we've had one match day already, but you know, I thought I'd get this out and then later on at the end of the season we'll see how we did and how close I actually was to the correct table at the end of the year. So we might as well just jump straight in and start off. At number 20, I have got Brighton. I don't know why, I just think last season, after they got rid of Chris Hewton, I don't know if it was the right decision. I guess wherever they finish, that will prove me right or wrong on this one. I just don't feel that Graham Potter is going to do the greatest job there. They may well have won their first game of the season, but that really doesn't mean anything during the course of the whole entire season. So, for that reason, I just think they're going to struggle a bit. I don't know if dismissing Chris Hewton earlier on last season was the correct decision, but we shall see. Following on from this, we have 19th place, which is Norwich City. This is one of the teams where obviously they did very well last year. They are one of these teams that kind of bounces up and down Premiership Championship every couple of years. And like they're a good team. They've got a good manager as well in Daniel Farker, but... Again, I don't think that they have recruited enough this year. You'll see another team like Aston Villa when we get onto them later on. They've recruited a lot. They have spent loads of money. I think even over 100 million, but we'll get onto that. But Norwich, I don't really think they've done it. So because of that, I'm actually just going to go with them in 19th place. If you keep on seeing me looking over to the side, it's just because I'm checking my table that I've set up. In 18th, we have Sheffield United again. The manager, superb. Chris Wilder, he's, I think his statistics actually show that he's one of the best managers or best English managers in the whole entire country over the last few years. But again, I just don't think they're going to have that little bit just to get them over the line. They, I don't know if it's just not enough depth or Premier League experience. They're going to struggle. They did well to bring in Phil Jagielka on a free. Obviously, that is that Premiership experience. Whether it's enough, we'll have to wait and see again. 17th, we have Southampton. Ralph Hasenhutl, that is definitely how you say it. When he came in last season, before, he like they were really struggling. They were probably on the way down. He come in, kind of revitalised them, and they really got going again. But I'm not getting that feeling this year. I know they've signed Danny Ings on a permanent transfer, which is a good start. But someone's got to struggle in the league, and I fear it may be them this year. They have... Some decent players, but whether they can compete with the others around them, who also seem to have bought a lot of players in, we'll just have to wait and see on that one. 16th, this is an interesting one. I don't know whether it will be true or not if they finish here, or they will finish here, but I've got Newcastle United. Obviously, Rafa Benitez has left, Steve Bruce has come in, there's not really the support there. The, the, uh, the fans aren't happy with the way that the club's being run. They don't think that there's enough money being spent. However, they have bought a lot of players. They bought Alan St. Maximin for only 20 million, which I think is very cheap because he does look very dangerous. Joe Linton and a couple of others as well who have just slipped my mind. So they have been spending money and they do look dangerous, especially from that first match day against Arsenal. St. Maximin looked really dangerous every single time he got on the ball. Joe Linton probably should have scored a goal as well. So I've got them in 16th, but to be fair, if they do get going, they could finish a lot higher or they could just collapse and finish a lot lower. They're kind of here or there, really. So it seems to be the story of Newcastle, but that's why I've got them in 16th place. In 15th, we have got Burnley, the ever-solid Burnley managed by Sean Dyche. They've brought in a couple of players, Jay Rodriguez, the most notable I just think that they're a solid team. They're very good at the back. They did kind of leak a few goals last year, but hopefully this season they can kind of bring that back up to their normal standard. And yeah, I just think they're a solid premiership team. They're kind of here and hereabouts around that 15th lower to mid-table position. I think they'll avoid the relegation battle, but I don't think they're going to be challenging any higher. In 14th, we have the final team that was promoted from the championship last year and that is of course Aston Villa I did mention earlier they've spent a lot of money I think over 100 million they've brought in around 12 players so they're definitely putting in the effort to stay in the division you saw with teams like Wolves last season when they come up they bought a lot of players and it definitely did work Wolves what did they finish I think seventh or eighth last season so I guess they're trying to fit that model and go with that again 14th though if they can get that that's an incredible first season regardless First aim is stay up, 
next day and just see how high you can get. So I've got 14th for Aston Villa. 13th is an interesting one. I've got Crystal Palace. Obviously, we've had the whole conundrum and saga with Wilfred Zahar. Was he going to leave to Arsenal? Was he going to leave to Everton? Well, no, he didn't leave at all. Crystal Palace's valuation was way too high. I think they're going to start the season off quite slow. Whether Zahar plays a lot, I don't really know. I can't imagine he will. He might be a bit sluggish. Obviously, he had the African Cup of Nations as well. But I think towards the end of the season, they will really get going again. Once all the fans and everything calm down about the whole Zahar situation, I think everything will be back to normal. He's obviously going to be playing very well. He's a quality player. And I think he will carry them through to a decent position in the Premier League this season. 12th place, we have Bournemouth. They seem to be another one of these teams that have just kind of nestled themselves in the Premiership and they're just comfortable. Like with Burnley, I know I've got them a little bit further down, but they're just a solid team, a very good set of players, a very good set of young players as well in terms of Burnley. And yeah, I just think that they're going to have a very good season. You've obviously got Josh King up front with Callum Wilson, an England international there. Prolific goal scorer, you'd say, for kind of a mid-range mid-table team decent at the back with Nathan Ake they just have a very good team so it'll be interesting to see if they can push into kind of this next group of teams ahead that we're about to talk about or if they will drop down or of course if they'll stay exactly where they are where I've got them which is 12th okay in the next spot in 11th place we have got Watford one of these teams in the area of kind of the really competitive teams all pushing for Europe and to be fair this next Four, five teams, they could all place in any of these positions, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that that will be these teams that are all going to go from, what, 11th up to around 7th, and of course we'll get on to that. So first of all, we have Watford. I mean, they have decent players. They've still got Takura. They managed to hold on to him. They didn't let him go to Everton, which is a great bit of business for them. They've still got Deeney. They've brought in Danny Welbeck from Arsenal, which should prove to be a good transfer. Obviously, he's, well, he's just a workaholic. He goes all day long. I just think that out of all of the teams, they might not have that little extra bit this year. I don't think they've brought that many other players in, correct me if I'm wrong, but for them, 11th isn't bad. They're obviously going to want more, but it's still a solid result. In 10th place, I've actually got West Ham. They have recruited very well this year, especially getting Haller up top after all the saga with Arnautovic. Good thing that he was out of the club. Haller's come in. They've also got four now. So they definitely spent the money. If they can keep players like Jack Wilshere fit, it's going to be tough. They can have a very good season. Declan Rice can only get better and better as well. So it should look very promising for them. They're going to want to push for Europe. I just don't know if they've got any more than 10th. They always seem to end up finishing around 10th most seasons. So I'm going to go with that again. In ninth, we have got Wolves. They've done very well. I said about it earlier. Last season, they came straight up. They invested the right way, and they managed to stay in the Premiership. They managed to get top 10 as well, and I think they will do the same again this season. They're going to be one of these teams that really want to push for Europe, and it's going to be very close between all these teams, Watford, West Ham so far, and Wolves. So do I think they'll get Europe? I don't think they will. It'll be very close. I imagine they're probably the type of team that'll go for a cup run. Maybe we might see them in the FA Cup really pushing for something because that is another way into Europe. Only time will tell, but for Wolves, I have got them in ninth place. In eighth, I have got Everton. Their recruitment was very interesting this summer. They were going for Zahar, what seemed kind of out of the blue, but then they really did step up their interest. It didn't quite happen. They ended up with Iwobi, which for me as an Arsenal fan, 35 million, I was absolutely amazed. Again, they're just a solid team. They really started to push on for the second half of last season and looked very competitive. If they can keep that up for the season ahead, they've got a really good chance of pushing for European places. I don't think they'll break into the top six. I don't think anybody will. But them, seventh or eighth, that's probably where I see them. And in seventh, I have got Leicester. This is the team who I think, I won't say 100%, but I'm 99% sure from what I've seen, that they will probably finish in seventh. They did great business. They got Iozo Perez's, Yuri Telemans as well. That is kind of the master strike. He costs about 40 million, but I think that is really like a superb piece of business over the summer. Him and James Madison in midfield, feeding in Vardy. It's just kind of a dream lineup for them. And if anyone's going to break into the top six, especially with Brendan Rodgers as manager, I think it will be Leicester. I don't think they will break into the top six, but they might run it very close. And now on to the top six, the big guns. I've actually got Chelsea in sixth. Frank Lampard's come in. 
he's inexperienced, but it doesn't mean he's not going to do a good job. He could well have a very good influence on the team. It's just with the lack of transfers from the transfer ban that they've got for these two windows, the one just gone and the one in January, it might be a bit of a struggle. Everyone around them has bought new players in. So you just kind of think they might slip behind a little bit. We saw from the first weekend, it didn't go too well against Manchester United, but like we say, the first weekend doesn't really mean much over the whole entire season. But yeah, I just don't think they're going to have enough to keep up with everyone else. So I've got them in sixth. In fifth, I've got Manchester United. They had a very interesting summer. They're always linked with these big players and then usually none of them actually ever come off. And it didn't seem to happen this year round either. They were linked to players like Mandzukic and even those didn't happen. I think the martial Rashford link up up top could be very good for them and it was something that they probably should have committed to a while back. Harry Maguire will be a good transfer. Wan-Bissaka as well. It kind of strengthens the defence. They've obviously got a good goalkeeper. If David De Gea doesn't lose his head again. But again, for them, I don't think it's enough to get into the top four. So that is that really. I've got them in fifth. Fourth place, I've got Tottenham. They're obviously not going to be above Arsenal because look, as you can see here, Arsenal fan, what do you expect? They've recruited well and Dombley looks like a top, top signing if I'm being completely honest. I haven't seen Lascelles Celso yet, but I imagine he'll be good as well. They've got a good thing going there. I can't deny it. I don't think they're going to win a trophy. They just don't seem to have that. Whether Christian Eriksen stays or not, that might affect them quite a lot for creativity this year. But yeah, I've got them finishing fourth. They're doing well, and I think they'll clear Chelsea and Manchester United. On this one, you may think I'm crazy. Arsenal, my team, I've got them in third. For me, when I look at it from last season, we should have finished third. We, I think out of our last four or five games, we lost four of them. We only need three points out of like a possible 15 to get Champions League and we somehow messed up. So the quality was there and this season we've reinforced. David Luiz is in at the back. Hopefully he'll prove to be decent. Rob Holding is back like a new signing as Arsene Wenger used to always say back in the day. Nicolas Pepe has come in. We've got young players like Martinelli. Our youth players coming through like Willock, Nelson, Saka, people like that. It's all looking very promising. If we can start off well, Hopefully get through these first couple of weeks. We've got tough games coming up against Chelsea. That's a lie, actually, against Tottenham and Liverpool in weeks three and four. If we can get through those with a couple of points, it's going to look good for the season ahead. So because of that, I have got Arsenal in third. I don't think we're going to challenge for the top two because we're just not there yet. But third, definitely top four. And finally, on to the top two, of course. It's only going to be two teams. I'll, I'll talk about these at the same time. We've got Liverpool in second. And Manchester City, of course, in first. Last season, absolutely incredible battle. We all thought Liverpool were going to get it, but Manchester City managed to turn it around and win. That was their second title in a row, and I think they will get their third title in a row. They've obviously brought in Rodri in midfield. He's going to be the new kind of Busquets for Pep Guardiola, this time at Manchester City, as opposed to Barcelona. And apart from that, what else did they need to strengthen? Sterling is playing out of his mind. I know Sane is injured for seven months, which is a really big loss. Isn't great, but they've still got enough depth with David Silva, Bernardo Silva. I don't even need to list off the rest. Liverpool have a great team too, as we all know. The front three is kind of incredible. Rig is getting more of a run out as well and scoring goals, so that's only looking good for them. I don't think they really brought in enough. They only brought in like Adrian as a backup keeper, a couple of youngsters, and that's about it. I just think Manchester City might be that little bit more consistent this year. They know how to win. They've done it. Liverpool will have another good run in the Champions League, but I'll save that for another video. And yeah, for that reason, I think Liverpool will come in second, Manchester City in first. They will be quite far ahead of everyone else in the league, but that's probably as to be expected. So with that, they are my predictions. Let me know what you think down below if anyone's massively out of place. I mean, I'm quite confident with how that's turning out. I'm interested to see if any of these teams I said that were going to finish down the bottom will surprise us and finish right close to the top, but we'll just have to wait and see. If you did enjoy today's video, make sure you hit a like on it. Make sure you subscribe if you are not already to the channel. Leave me those comments, and I'll see you all on the next video.